This video brought to you by our two executive producers, Cosmazor and Tom Dolan. Thank you. Hello friends, this is a sort of not a usual video. I'm going to talk about a TV show and not in a media theory type way. This may actually be the most controversial video I'm going to put out in a while because I am going to talk about Doctor Who. Uh, don't worry, this channel isn't going to turn into uh, just my media thoughts. Um, although I did put a poll on Patreon um, about doing some of these. Uh, just when I think I have something to say that's, you know, kind of against the, the, the green or, or integrating things that I talk about on the channel like gender or politics. And I'm going to kind of do that in this video because I'm going to talk about Doctor Who, specifically the last episode of Doctor Who that aired. It was a while ago now, although time is weird because of quarantine. It was in the before times. Um, the, the last episode that was the Timeless Children. And I'm not going to talk about the whole episode. I'm not going to do a whole big review of the episode, but just for, just for like bang bullet points. <laughs> It was fine. There were some really cool, tense moments. The Cyberlords were really, really cool, but they were kind of utterly pointless. I really like Sasha Dewan's Master, and it sort of finishes this nice three Master Cyberman arc. Um, but it was cool. Um, but I do want to talk about the final moment. Well, not really the final moment, but the big revelation of the episode that kind of got some people in a bit of a tizzy and that is the revelation that the doctor is not originally from gallifrey and i'm not going to say that the doctor is not a time lord and i'm not going to say that the doctor is the the jesus of the time lords or anything or the special god of the time lords because that isn't what happened like i'm not going to go through the big law uh, I'm gonna mostly talk about themes in this in this video. If you want to talk about lore, there's a really good article by the Radio Times. I'm gonna stick in the description that kind of talks about basically what changed and what didn't. The more importantly is what didn't. Uh, the Doctor's still a Time Lord. The everything like the Doctor's childhood is still it still all happened. Everything on the show still happened. The only like and and everything the Doctor has said about their past previously has been to the best of their knowledge correct. So. Nothing really has changed law-wise, just more things have been added to the law and kind of justified already established law points a bit better. Because let's let's talk about the reason the Doctor left Gallifrey in the first place. According to earlier Doctors, and I've got some notes here just in case I get things wrong, I did have a friend who's watched lots and lots of Classic Who and like is very intimately knowledgeable with Classic Who, go over this and sort of add some notes. So I've got some notes here, so I apologise if I read from my notes, not that you... Not that you can't tell I do that in other videos, but hey. Um, so the Doctor's previous story for leaving Gallifrey is, he said he was bored. He was bored because the Time Lords didn't let him interfere in stuff. And so basically, like, like I think, like, like it's not dissimilar to like, Prime Directive stuff in Star Trek, I believe, I'm not a Star Trek fan. Um, but like the Time Lords didn't believe in interfering with the development of other worlds or, or the lives of other people. And the Doctor like likes doing that. So he got bored and ran away. And, like, apart from that being, like, garbage liberal interventionist policy, like, it also just reeks of privilege. Like, the old plot point of, like, privileged man is bored of the way the fuddy-duddies do it and wants to go and blaze his own trail so he steals a very, very expensive thing. That is so hack. That is so boring that, like, that is, like... 18 year old's first ever novel that's the kind of stuff that they put in there and not to not to discourage people from writing but when you write you when you first write you go to the tropes and that is a trope that is a boring ass trope so i don't blame them for wanting to spice that up a little and like later on that was sort of elaborated on and the doctor said that they didn't like the pomposity and hypocrisy of the time lords um, and that was exploring something called Deadly Assassin, which again, I'm going off my friend's notes here. Um, that is also the story that stated Time Lords only have 12 regenerations, so we've already gone back on that once. Yeah, so so in Deadly Assassin, it was sort of elaborated on and the Doctor was like, the, the Time Lords are this pompous, hip hypocritical race, and that's also why I left. And again, like, that's fine, but it's still, to base a story on, it's not a lot. And it reeks of privilege. It reeks of white men writing for white men. And the doc, the doc, the, the series, the show has become so much more than that. That again, I don't blame them for wanting to elaborate on this point. 
Uh, let's talk about the Doctor. The Doctor has always been an outcast. Like, sometimes that outcastishness has uh, manifested in childlike wonder. Sometimes it's like Jesus savior imagery. Sometimes it's like grumpy old man, but they have always stuck out. They've always been an outcast. And in 13, it manifests as this like weird nerd who can't have a proper conversation, but gets really, really enthusiastic about her interests. And just as an aside, I, I so many Doctor Who viewers fall into that same weird, nerd, awkward, but really enthusiastic category that you'd think they'd enjoy 13 more because they would be able to, you know. However it manifests, the Doctor is an outcast. The Doctor has never, never belonged. So I guess that does kind of match why the Doctor left Gallifrey, but it's such a boring base level thing. And again, it's this, it's this elite bored kid, has privilege, runs away. And, ugh, ugh. And then there's this new origin story. And the new origin story is a refugee was found and taken in by a powerful citizen on a planet far from their own. They were treated as their equal until the, until the powerful citizen found something that the refugee had that she did not. The refugee was then experimented on it against their will, abused and killed over and over by somebody who they thought was their friend, who thought was, they were their guardian. And then this powerful society took this thing, this one thing that this refugee had as their own, and they took it as theirs and spread it and disseminated it among the elites, in, among the powerful, making them more powerful in the process. The refugee was then forced by this powerful society to do the dirty work of this society, interfering in other world's businesses while they hypocritically tell the rest of the Time Lords that they are not allowed to do so. And not only that, but they erase the memory of this refugee so they can't even remember the good or terrible things they've been made to do. They've banned everyone from interfering unless you're interfering for the rich and powerful. And this feels like su this is such a more interesting story to me and this is such a more like the doctor is now an outcast because they were because they had one thing and that one thing was taken from them by the rich and powerful and that they and the rich and powerful used that one thing to make themselves more rich more powerful that to me is so much more interesting than a than a rich privileged kid gets bored and leaves and this, but even like the two stories now work in, in conjunction with each other because the, 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 I left because I'm not allowed to interfere. Now, like it, it, it now plays in the back of the doctor's head this whole time that was because they want to interfere and part of them knows they have in the past, but now they're not allowed anymore. It's, it just, it makes the old story less terrible and also adds another layer of, of a deeper, more meaningful, more original, and more like like it just adds so much. This is again, this is my opinion. I think I think it adds so many extra layers of 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 outcast and of relatability and of just like it's not just a privileged bored kid anymore. And again, it's it's this sort of making them making their like it's not that they are the Jesus of the Time Lords and they invented regeneration. They got it stolen from them. They got it stolen and, and spread throughout society against their will. They were experimented on by the person that they the person that they thought they could trust. And I've got a lot of notes here about like about bringing back previous time lords and 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 like thank you to 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 Neil who wrote all these notes for me. But I don't think that they're relevant. Like and again, he's 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 written this this one thing that 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 I think sums up so much of of why I like this thing. It yes ands the canon. It doesn't go no. It doesn't go no. That's not canon anymore. Like a lot of people are mad because they feel like this whole thing was was constructed to make the Morbius Doctors canon. And the Morbius Doctors, if you don't know, if you're not like really nerdy into Doctor Who, the Morbius Doctors are. Um, there's an episode where the Doctor, where where you see a bunch of regenerations of the Doctor, including some that, that that have never existed, and they were just like like backstage guys in costumes, and they were referred to as the Morbius Doctors, and. I don't think this was created to make that canon, but it, it yes-ands that. It goes, yeah, that could have happened. 
and 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 everything else could have happened like like it doesn't decanonize anything it just adds more and it's all more interesting and imagine the spin-offs that we can get off this like imagine the big finish division stories imagine the joe martin spin-off comics books big finish stories again like the door is now wide open for so much more to explore so much more interesting stories to be told and no door has been closed only doors have been opened a lot of the arguments in fit like a lot of the arguments against this are also talking about the future of doctor who about how this this is gonna sanctify the jesusness of the doctor i don't think it will and more importantly we don't know that it will this was a season finale so arguing about what's gonna happen is pointless because we don't have more Doctor Who until next year, I don't believe. Maybe a New Year's special. So, arguing about stuff like that is pointless. Um, all I can... Like, what if we never hear about The Division again? What if the only time we do is in Big Finish stories and books and comics and this doesn't change who the Doctor is? Then it's not that big a deal. But it has yes added so much canon, it's added so many more layers to the Doctor as a character, and it's made them way less of a privileged arsehole with a box. And the Doctor's always, the Doc, Doctor Who canon has always changed. People always get mad at the changes. This is just another one that everyone's going to get over soon. But I like it. And I think I may have made a point in this video. If not, I won't edit it and I won't put it up. But yeah, give it, give it a try. I think it's pretty good. Um, I'm not sure if you heard that car that just drove past, but that was a really annoying car. I want to end the video now. Thank you for watching this completely unprompted ramble about a year old TV show. If you liked this video, please click on the like button and leave a comment down below for algorithmic purposes. If you don't have anything to say, just tell me I look great today. And if you want to help me out monetarily, you can check me out on Patreon. And a big thank you to the patrons of this month, the Fresh Cheese Bags, What Would Jedi Do, Neurotic Anarchy, The Magpie Magus, Malloy, Carl Rad, The Horse of Many Names, Ethan Saffron, Alex Bryson, and our two executive producers, Tom Dolan and Cosmazor. Love you, bye.